so comforted in his faith in science, so emboldened by a sense of certainty about the universe and his place within it. He gallantly shines his light of reason upon the natural world from which he came, cataloguing and comparing with such arrogance as to believe that he understands. But what of the darkness that remains? A place beyond science, beyond reason, a place dominated by unseen entities and happenings that challenge and ridicule the very foundation of his beliefs. Watch as we pick loose the threads of reality and unravel the veil that has been cast across the eyes of humanity for far too long. Join me, J.K. Dunleavy, as I investigate the unknown. I arrive in Perth, Western Australia. Singapore Airlines flight SQ213. Greeted by warm weather, I waste no time beginning my journey into the unknown. After all, ghosts do not sleep. They are restless by nature. Although the city of Perth is the most far-flung outpost of Western civilization, it is quite unremarkable. Simply a normal city located in an abnormal part of Earth. In stark contrast, my destination, a small town whose story runs counter to all expectations. A town with a dark history all to itself. A town so completely out of place in the Australian outback. This is New Norcia. To say New Norcia is different to most outback towns would be an understatement. The town was founded and is still entirely controlled by a group of Benedictine monks from Spain, Europe. Established in 1846 at a time when Australia was in its infancy, these monks battled extreme heat and disease. The threat of starvation was ever present, the tyranny of distance foreboding, yet they remained resolute almost to the point of lunacy. On the first anniversary of settlement, the monks began construction of a bell tower that would be completed exactly one year to the day. Numerous buildings follow. But why here? Why here of all places? Their stated aim, to convert the local Aborigines to Catholicism, but there must be something else. Stories of the town's hauntings and other strange occurrences are quite common in Australian folklore. My goal, to document these manifestations of the unknown. Previous attempts by others have often been thwarted by the insular monastery. I don't expect a warm welcome. We reach the edge of the outback and decide to pull off from the main highway and get some snacks. I find my snack satisfactory. I use this time to prepare for the task to come. Complimentary lollies are a nice touch and I chew mine aggressively. It's time to hit the road. We are currently making our way deeper into the Australian outback and there has been a discernible change in the ambience around me, quite hard to explain. Aboriginal Dreamtime legends suggest that any spiritual being leaves behind a spiritual essence in the form of, of rocks or rivers, or trees or animals. And this is wearing heavily on my mind as we head deeper into the unknown. Less and less. 
space between life and death narrows, isolation expands. We hurtle towards past time, past lives. The other world draws nearer. Finally, we reach our destination. There's a museum in the center of town. A conflict of curios from another time. Its artifacts tell stories of foreigners lost deep in a void of time and space. monks descended on a stone age continent and lived for generations barely recognizing the world changing in the distance. A grandfather clock emits a strange low-level radiation. Apart from the security manning the front desk, we are completely alone. But we hear 
footsteps. The museum reveals these Benedictine monks held a fascination for deep space, the cosmos. What were these men really doing here? I leave the museum. Well, I have to say I'm a little disappointed with the level and depth of information that they've given me in there. I seem to have been fobbed off with a bunch of flyers and they stonewalled me on some certain questions. I'm going to have to go further my research. I have no choice but to consult cyberspace. I begin transmitting and receiving, communicating with yet another world. A clandestine network of hackers, theorists, truth seekers of all kinds. They tell stories of many mysteries, unexplained fires, blue nuns appearing late at night, flying around the monk's bell tower. I'm given an anonymous lead, something beyond all my expectations. Just a few kilometres out of New Norcia, there is a very inconspicuous operation, something hard to believe. The European Space Agency is conducting experiments using a giant deep space satellite dish. This is something I cannot ignore, and we head out of town instantly with hopes of finding it. My investigation turns intergalactic. Using old neglected roads, we managed to make visual contact. We continue to explore. Soon, we hit the outer perimeter of the ESA installation. Serious warnings are there to greet us. We ignore these warnings. starting to make a little sense. But there is a strange, eerie feeling out here. I don't know if it's the security guards but, or the Aboriginal Dreamtime spirits, but I'm not alone up here, that's for certain. currently on the hillside behind the European Space Agency satellite. We were denied entry at the gate. It's a heavily secured area out here. They want nobody looking at what's going on in there. So we've had to come around this bush track and enter this dense bushland here to try and get a better understanding of what's going on over that hill there. As always, I've brought my EMF reader with me and the readings I'm picking up seem to be growing in intensity. So let's move further up the hill and see what we can find.
there. I can see the satellite dish, but I can also see a patrol a 50, 75 meters away from here. It appears we are denied access at this entry as well. Whatever's going on in there, they want to keep it a secret. So we spent the past 45 minutes trekking around the perimeter of the European Space Agency satellite in the direction of New Norcia. And I've come to the conclusion, after now analysing these EMF readings, that both New Norcia and the satellite dish are on a ley line. Ley lines are the Earth's natural energy grid, a series of invisible lines that crisscross the planet in a geometric fashion, emitting a mysterious harmonic energy. And it would seem the ancients had an intimate knowledge of this. Machu Picchu, the Stonehenge, the Pyramids of Giza, and all three points of the Bermuda Triangle are located on ley lines. And, like in Eunosia, it is at the intersection of these ley lines where we see an increase in paranormal activity. After our close call with European authorities, we decide to recoup at the local establishment. At first, the locals aren't impressed by our presence. But the mood soon turns to jovial. I use this time to collate my findings thus far. Could there be a connection between the ghost sightings and the ESA deep space satellite dish? Both the Order of Monks and the ESA chose this site for a reason. And what do the bell tower and the town's graveyard have to do with this? Could the bell tower and now the satellite dish be an attempt to conduct and amplify the Earth's natural energy. Is this responsible for the manifestations of the unknown that have plagued this town of New Norcia for years? Something peculiar happens. Moments after sunset, all the locals leave in unison. Only visitors remain. It would seem these locals know something we do not. The time is right to do what we came here for. Currently here at the New Norcia clock tower, the sun has just finally set and we're just setting up our equipment, which is unmanned and will allow us to uh, capture anything while we're not here, whilst we go investigate the cemetery in the north of the town. Time is 13 minutes past eight o'clock in the evening here in Eunosia. Our initial equipment checks have been done. Everything's functioning at 100%. Uh, I don't perceive any problems on that front. The town in Eunosia has gone very quiet. Uh, the final people are leaving town. I can see the hotel shutting up the road and the monastery behind me. People are now turning out the lights. Over the next few hours, we'll continue to monitor the situation. And uh, I think we'll see some results in a couple of hours from now. the sensation I get here at the back of the cemetery. But I get a distinct feeling that I'm not alone out here. 
Garth, let's get the recording up here quickly. So just before I sensed, I felt something up here in this northwest corner of the cemetery. I'd, uh, I'd just like to set the camera, set the camera up for a while and, and see what we can catch. right now I'm experiencing a massive temperature fluctuation it's just dropped down to two degrees Celsius whereas literally moments ago it was 11 degrees and this is not this is the second time this has happened in the space of 15 minutes I'm sensing a definite change in the energy in this area right now I suspect we'll see further signs in, in mere moments So I'm recording massive temperature fluctuations all around the cemetery here right now and I've been checking on my EMF meter but it, it's going haywire, it's not making any sense. For, for here it says it's 5 degrees yet back over here I'm experiencing temperatures here close to 0 degrees Celsius and once, once again it's back up to 15 and yeah, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means, but I suspect something is about to happen. Keep recording. There's something definitely going on around this fence here. The temperature seems to change at each corner of this box. Gasp over there, quickly. Once again, two degrees Celsius. Something is definitely wrong out here tonight. So we've been to the cemetery now for oh, at least another two hours. And my readings are starting to calm down a little bit. They're starting to be a bit more centered on this one area that we investigated earlier, this fenced off grave. It appears to me that this is the crux of what is happening here in the cemetery. And I've noted that its headstone or headstones have been forcibly removed from here by persons unknown. So it's now 10.30 right now and we're experiencing some massive temperature fluctuations as I've said before but we're starting to begin to experience some uh, electromagnetic interference with our equipment. It's not behaving correctly, my th electrical thermometer has just stopped working and now I'm finding Check, check one two. Are we recording? Yep. We've just experienced a massive equipment failure here at the New North Sea Cemetery. We've had to change our battery over three times. The EMF readings are off the charts right now. It's something like I've never experienced before. The temperature and the energy in the air has changed completely here. It's very hard to just very hard to describe what's going on here. All our equipment failed simultaneously. It would not return to working order until dawn the next day. We waste no time in returning to Perth to begin a formal analysis. The latest in computer technology reveals many unexplained sounds in our audio recordings.
but this evidence pales in comparison with what our camera at the bell tower captured in the seconds prior to malfunction. What is this apparition? Lens flare is ruled out. Reflection ruled out. And it couldn't be mist or fog at this time of year. What is this manifestation? Is this proof of ghosts? Is this the blue nun of New Norcia? Or is it simply some sort of interference with our equipment, perhaps caused by experiments unknown? One thing is certain, that the evidence I have gathered in New Norcia is beyond the understanding of mainstream science. Perhaps one day we will have more answers than questions. Perhaps science can shine a light on this dark patch of man's knowledge. Until then, I leave it up to you, the viewer, to decide. I hope you will join me on my next investigation. I'm J.K. Dunleavy. Good night.